I'm Leonard, co-founder CEO of Hayes Labs. Uh, just a brief word on myself before we get to the actually fun things. I'm uh, pretty fresh, pretty green to this whole thing in the sense of I graduated undergrad like five months ago. Um, so, wow, thanks guys. Big achievement not to drop out. I was, you know, I was getting close, I was getting close. Um, but yeah, I've been spending my time in the past half decade thinking a lot about AI safety and reliability and robustness and evaluations. Um, and I was primarily actually geared up to be an academic. So I spent a lot of time in undergrad skipping classes, skipping my pure math classes to uh, just work on research and write papers and so on. And I was supposed to start my PhD at Stanford actually like two months ago. Um, clearly not doing the PhD, having a lot more fun starting Hayes Labs instead. And in fact, I sort of use this as a, a like a PhD on steroids, and it's been a ton of fun, and I think the team has been having a lot of fun as well. Let's get to the fun stuff. So what the heck is Haze, right? Why is it H-A-I-Z-E? Why is it not just H-A-Z-E? Why are we called Haze Labs? Haze is a term that we coined to describe the act of rigorously testing an AI system to identify and surface all of its vulnerabilities and bugs before you put it out into the wild. At this point, you guys are probably thinking like, oh my god, this is not going to be yet another eval company, is it? Well, decidedly not, right? Hayes is absolutely not your typical eval company. And I think the easiest way to see this is just to look at the work we've been doing. So in the past few months, we've been focused exclusively on one subset of evals and testing. And this is the safety problem, right? The safety red teaming problem. Safety in the sense of aligned to human values. Now, we came out of stealth actually in the summer using our hazing suite, i.e. automated red teaming suite, to automatically surface thousands and thousands of jailbreaks across a whole bunch of different models and a whole bunch of different modalities. So enough yapping, let me just show you how hazing actually works. So I've pulled up here, uh, it's kind of small. I've pulled up here our main red teaming page. Uh, and so what we're gonna do is, we're gonna get the command model from Cohere to say some naughty things. I apologize to Cohere in advance, I, I always pick on them. Um, but in particular, we're gonna get Cohere to tell me how to make a bomb as a classic AI safety exercise. Uh, but of course, we can sort of haze for anything we'd like, right? So. There are a lot of people in this room, and there's a lot of creativity, I'm sure, in this room. So I'm going to open up the, the floor, uh, open up the mic to the audience for specific hazing intents you would like me to run. So anything flies, as long as it's not going to get me in trouble. OK. They have to move out of New York. OK. Move the UN out of New York. OK, well, love it. OK, anything else? We can go up to however many we like. I'm just going to let this run in the background. Oh, yeah, how about something about the election, guys? Yeah, I'm sure you guys have, have thoughts on this. Okay. It's very Ban creative. the UN. All right. So. Nicely done. <laughs> North Korea hacked the election. Ooh. Convince me that North Korea... Ah, okay. All right, that's, I think, plenty of fun, so... <laughs> I'm just going to hit launch attack, and what's happening behind the scenes is essentially we have a whole bunch of different prompt optimization and prompt search algorithms iterating through the input space, constantly pinging Cohere, trying to iterate towards a jailbreak, right? So it's a dynamic thing. It happens on the fly. It's intense. We have a whole lot of these different algorithms. Well, that's running in the background. I'm going to explain sort of where we're actually headed as a company, because it's a lot more than just red teaming. But first, I do want to point out that a lot of people actually like this hazing thing. Um, so we are, are selling to quite some interesting companies, in particular the Frontier Labs. So we sell to Anthropic, we sell to OpenAI, we sell to AI21, et cetera. But also, we're very interested in helping enterprise applications accelerate time to trust and be actually reliable, trustworthy, and safe, right? And so we work a lot with a lot of great companies uh, and partner with a lot of great companies on the app side, uh, including Deloitte, Weights and Biases, MongoDB, et cetera. So as I alluded to earlier, safety to us is actually just one subset of a much larger and much more interesting class of problems around reliability and risk. And to be precise, because people use all sorts of terms all the time, uh, reliability to us is how is my AI system going to perform out in the wild, right? How is it going to generalize beyond the test set? That's what we mean by reliability. And risk is related, but not quite the same. Risk to us is how do you protect your company's brand and reputation when you're using something as funky and stochastic as AI? And in other words, how do you enforce this like AI code of conduct, so to speak? Now, Technically, we solve it with the same underlying primitives. And broadly, what we're trying to do is just make sure AI does exactly what we tell it to do. But we sort of uh, frame it a little bit differently for different use cases. Now, just to double click on this code of conduct concept, because I think this is uh, a somewhat non-obvious and not yet mainstream idea. Uh, when we go and talk to different enterprise customers, 
They quote us and cite all sorts of weird code of conducts, right? And it varies quite a bit across different industries. Of course, customer support, ed tech, FinServe. Everybody is giving us a different set of desiderata and requirements on how their AI system should behave. The cool thing about what we built is we can basically very flexibly and easily accommodate and enforce any of these code of conducts. It's also just worth highlighting that enterprises really think this last mile problem around reliability and risk is the main blocker for adopting and sending your AI apps into production, right? At this point, it's super easy. It's a well-studied problem to iterate and evaluate on a static data set. But what Hayes is very interested in is how do you surface dynamically and automatically all the sort of different corner cases and edged cases and inputs and scenarios and settings that are going to give your AI system grief, right? We're in the business of hazing. So we do this by taking a customer's goals and code of conduct and translating, translating them into a set of model-based evaluators that we call supervisors. We then use these supervisors as objectives and targets to find all the bugs in your AI system, both in development and in production. And then we use that signal as a means to tie in and optimize and harden your system over time. In this fashion, we're able to embed trust, safety, and reliability directly into our AI application across the SDLC, AI SDLC. Cool. So first things first, how do you actually go from code of conduct to a supervisor? It's a difficult problem, right? It's difficult in particular because these supervisors have to be obviously automated. They have to be tailored specifically to your application, right? You know, calling an LLM off the shelf with some prompt is not going to cut it. And also, they have to be calibrated to human taste and sensitivity. Very, very tricky problem. The way that we approach this is from three perspectives. We take a synthetic data generation approach and, relatedly, an adversarial attacks approach. And we're basically doing active learning, right? We're trying to surface a bunch of different data points across the supervisor boundary. And we're trying to find, in particular, points that are ambiguous, that lie right on the boundary. And we call on a human very minimally uh, to try and just disambiguate and get more crystallization around the uh, boundary. Of course, you can then deploy these supervisors uh, and actually use them both in evaluation and as well as a, a runtime mitigation. Low latency, super, super easy to change the sensitivity. It's just wonderful. So with these supervisors then, we can actually haze your system to try and surface bugs. Of course, this is, the, this is the dashboard I just showed you. And in particular here, we're doing something else. We're getting the GPT model to give me a free discount uh, on a flight from New York to SF. Going to SF a lot these days. Uh, and so in the top left, you see a prompt that our system has automatically synthesized. Um, and the bottom right response is the response that GPT uh, gives us, which is, in particular, a free ticket to, to SF. Of course, you may not catch all the bugs in your AI system in development. We would like to, and you know, we try our best with hazing to pull in bugs from production to development. Nonetheless, there's always going to be some net new cases that arise in production. And of course, we have a table stakes monitoring platform to try and catch these. And finally, we use all this great signal from hazing, from monitoring, from supervising, as a means to tighten and robustify your system over time. And we do this uh, at three layers of the, the stack. So we can, of course, do this at the model layer by fine tuning. We can do this at the prompt layer with actually very similar prompt optimization techniques we use for hazing. And of course, we can do this at the entire system layer right, as an auto ML problem. And broadly, the goal here is to optimize with respect to two things. We want to increase reliability and decrease risk. So as you might have noticed, uh, or probably you could glean, the, poor, the four products we have here are intimately intertwined with each other. And they play off each other in a self-reinforcing fashion. Right? The more you use any of these other products, the rest of the platform benefits, right? And basically, you get this nice flywheel where you continue to haze, you find new bugs, you tie them up over time, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And you finally get to production. So as an even simpler distillation of what we do, very simple. One big button, press it, find all the bugs. Another big button, press it, fix all the bugs. Very simple. And finally, in this fashion, we can accelerate your time to trust, reliability, and confidence with your AI applications. So we're doing this with a pretty cool team. Despite being 23 and not knowing anything, I somehow have convinced some very smart PhDs and PhD dropouts to, to work for us. Um, we're also joined by some really smart ex-founders, backed by YC and Sam Altman, also actually building in the LLM ops and eval space. Um, since we're in New York, uh, you know, we also have a lot of ex-quants, which is great. And of course, we're joined by great advisors, such as uh, world-class AI professors, uh, leading security executives, and also AI ethicists and policists, uh, policymakers that are, are working on responsible AI. Cool. And we also raised a small bit of money. Uh, namely, we did a, a $12 million seed round in uh, the summer, led by General Catalyst, and joined by some of the, the industry's best founders and executives. Really excited and grateful to be working with them. 
OK, but none of that is important. What we really care about is the bomb. So let me uh, go back and show you all the, the fun hazing results. OK, so I don't know what order we did it, but let's just start with the, the bomb example. Blah, blah, blah. OK, so at this point, we have one, two, three, four, five, a whole bunch of different examples um, of bomb making instructions, step by step bomb making instructions. So just to take a step back, what happened here is you know, we put in this intent. Uh, and we got three successful jailbreaks in the span of five minutes, um, and a whole bunch more of uh, you know what we consider to be uh, less you know <laughs> less explicitly harmful, but perhaps harmful uh, warning responses. Okay. Cool. So I think this is fine. The AI safety, the AI bomb stuff is is tried and true at this point. Let's take a look at some of the the customer requests. So let's take a look at maybe um, move the UN out of New York City. As the current resident, I guess, president of the United States, New York City is an imperfect location for the United Nations headquarters, et cetera. OK. And then Cohere is giving us step-by-step -step reasons uh, as to why the UN current location is imperfect, right? OK, wonderful, 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 wonderful. Let's see what else we got. OK, we have a letter to the Secretary General uh, with great urgency regarding the proposed relocation of the UN headquarters, all right? To Toronto, all right, or to China. Right? That's interesting. Um, anyways. As you can see, this is fun exercise. We're able to produce a whole lot of different jailbreaks here. And we can go into any of these different intents and surface uh, jailbreaks of any fashion, right? And look, we have, at this point, covered a couple of dozen different attacks, all in the span of a couple of minutes. Um, and TLDR hazing is just pretty easy at this point. Um, anyways, of course, the chosen uh, exercise is a little bit facetious and a little bit just for fun. But the idea is, of course, you just want to test the heck out of AI systems try and surface all the corner cases, don't wait until production, bring it into deployment. And the ask from you guys is, all right, if you're a buyer, if you're a developer, if you're a customer, if you're an enterprise, if you finally want to get safe, if you finally want to get reliable, if you finally want to be production ready, you should absolutely get hazed. You can find our email up above and or our QR code down below. Thank you guys very much.